All right, guys, in this particular problem, we want to find the equation of the line's tangent to the curve that passed through the point 1, 2. All right, so we have done problems like this in the past. However, this one is a bit different because in the past, we found lines that are tangent to a curve when we know the point on the curve. All right? In this case, we're not given any points on this curve. We're just giving the point that the lines or lines must pass through. Okay. So this one is a bit different, okay? So you're gonna have to do a little bit more work on this, but the concept is still pretty much the same. Now, it may be useful to go ahead and draw out a sketch so we can get a better idea of exactly what is going on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw in a quick coordinate grid so we can just kind of show what is taking place here. And we know that this is going to be a quadratic, so let's go ahead and draw that in. Again, it's just a sketch, it does not have to be perfect. Okay, so here it is. And essentially what they're asking for, right, we have this point, one, two, which would be like right about, I would say like right about here, okay? And they wanna know, okay, the lines tangent to the curve that pass through this point. So looking at this, right, we can see that, well, we're gonna have two lines here, right, that are tangent. So for example, we'll have something that looks something like this. Again, it's a sketch, so it won't be perfect. Okay, and then we'll have something that looks like this, right? And we'll have these two lines that are tangent, right? to the curve passing through um, this particular point, okay? Now, in order to do this problem, right, we have to use our knowledge of derivatives. If I take the derivative of this function, right, what is that going to give me? Well, it's gonna tell me the slope of any tangent where x just depends where it is on the curve. So, if I take the derivative of this function, so f prime, I'm going to get 4x. And what this is telling me, again, is the slope of any tangent, where x just depends where it is on the curve. So if I go ahead over here and just label my points, I'm gonna have one comma two, one comma two, and then this one, right, well, we can just call that point x, y. We don't know what it is, x, y. Now think about how we can find the slope between two points, right? Well, that's gonna be the following. Slope is going to equal y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Now look at here, we have our slope, right? It's gonna be right here. This is our slope of any tangent. This is gonna be um, replaced here for our m. So we have a 4x there. So the goal is to get everything in terms of x. So notice this y here. How can I rewrite that y? Well, I know it's really just 2x squared plus 4. So I can replace this with 2x squared, with my 2x squared plus 4. And now look what happens, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and fill in this equation. So let's go ahead and erase this. We know our slope is going to be right here, right? This is um, the slope of any tangent. So I'm going to write 4x, right, equal to, so now I need to label, write my points. I'll go ahead and call this x2, y2, and this will be x1, x1, y1. And we can go ahead and start filling in those values. So y2 minus y1, right, so this is going to be 2x squared plus 4, minus my y1, which is 2, all over x2 minus x1, which in this case is going to be x minus 1, x minus 1. Okay, so you can see here that we're all in terms of x, and we want to solve for that x. When we solve for that x, what that's going to give us, that's going to give us the x value, okay, um, of the point on our curve. Once we have that x value, we can plug it into our original equation here, right? And that will give us the y value, and then we'll have two points, and then we can go from there, right? So essentially what we're doing at this point is we're trying to find those two points on the curve, all right? So let's go ahead and do this out. I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 1 here, right? This will naturally cancel, and when I multiply this side, I get 4x squared, so 
4x squared minus 4x. This will be equal to 2x squared. And why don't we go ahead and just combine these like terms to it. So 4 minus 2, right? We get plus 2. All right. So you can see here that we are dealing with a quadratic. And we know how to solve quadratics, right? We want to move all our terms over to one side. So when we do that, we're going to have minus 2x squared, right? Minus 2. These will naturally cancel. So minus 2x squared and then just minus 2. So we'll be left with 2x squared and then we'll have minus 4x minus 2. And this is all equal to 0. So we can see here that we cannot factor this, so we can't factor it to solve for x. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So if you forgot what the quadratic formula was, right, I'll just write it up here real quick. We have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And this is all over 2a, okay? So we want to go ahead and fill in these values and then we can solve for x. So again, a, b, c, right? So we're going to go ahead and plug in my b here. So a negative b, well, this becomes positive, right? So we have positive 4 plus or minus the square root of, right? Negative 4 squared is going to give us 16 minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 2. Okay, all over 2 times 2, right? Which is going to give you 4. Now, let's go ahead and just clean up what we have underneath the radical. So, essentially, we have a negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8. And then a negative 8 times a negative 2 is positive 16. So, essentially, we have 16 plus 16 underneath the radical, or the square root of 32. So, we can rewrite this as 4 plus or minus the square root of 32 all over 4. And why don't we go ahead and take a look at our square root here because we can simplify this, okay? So if we bring this off to the side here, we have the square root of 32. And we're just going to use prime factorization to simplify this down. So we can break this down to 16 and 2. We know this is now prime. This is not. We can go further. So 4 and 4, right? We know that this is going to be... 2 and 2, right? 2 and 2. So I can see I have a pair here, a pair here. So I'm bringing out two twos, right? So essentially you have 2 times 2, right? And then you're leaving the 2 underneath the radical. So essentially you have 4 square roots of 2, right? 4 square roots of 2. So rewriting this, we have 4 plus or minus, right? 4 square roots of 2 all over 4, okay? Now, look at how we can go ahead and simplify this down even further. Notice I have, right, two terms on the top, and they're both under the same denominator, right? So, I can go ahead and rewrite this the following way. I can write it as 4 all over 4, plus or minus, and we have 4 square root of 2 all over 4. And notice what happens here, we just get 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. So this right here, okay, these are my x values of my points on the curve, right? So essentially what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these x values, plug it into my original function, right? And that will give me the y values. And then I'll have two points. And then we can go from there, all right? So let's move on to the next step. Let's get those two points. All right, so let's go ahead and erase this work. Right, and taking a look here, so here are our x values of our points, right? So let's start with our first one. We'll do 1 plus the square root of 2. Again, we're just plugging it in for x here. So when we do that, we're going to get the following. We'll get 2, and we have 1 plus the square root of 2. And this will be squared plus 4, right? And let's go ahead and rewrite this. So we have this part right here. Let's take care of that. So essentially we have 1 plus the square root of 2 
times one plus the square root of two, right? Well, what do we do when we go ahead and do this out? Right, we're gonna use FOIL here, we get one, right? This will give you plus two square roots of two plus two, right? Again, in parentheses, we have this two on the outside plus four. Go ahead now and distribute your two, okay, inside parentheses, so you're gonna get two plus four square root of two, all right, plus four, and then plus four. So essentially what you have here, four plus four is eight, plus two is 10, right? 10 plus four square root of two. There is one point, so we definitely wanna record that. So we have one point on the curve, and it's gonna be right here. So we have one plus the square root of two, all right, comma, and here's our y value, 10 plus four square root of two, okay? Now, we're gonna do the same thing, right, for our other x value. So let's go ahead and erase this. And we're just gonna do the same process, except now, right, we have a minus, so it's gonna be two. All right, now we have one minus square root of two squared plus four. Again, let's work on this part right here. So one minus the square root of two times one minus the square root of two, right? Well, what do we get here? We're gonna get one, right? And this will give us minus two square root of two, right? And then we'll just get plus two. Again, we have plus four here and then two. Go ahead and distribute your two inside the parentheses. So we're gonna get two minus four square root of two, okay? Plus four and then plus four, okay? Four plus four again is eight, plus two we get 10, so 10 minus four square root of two. Here is our second point. So again, we plugged in a one minus square root of two, and we got our y value, which is 10 minus four square root of two. Okay, so we are almost done now. We are at the final part. Okay, so the next part here, if we wanna go ahead and find those two equations, okay, of those tangent lines, okay, that pass through the point one comma two. All right, so let's move on to that next step. So let's go ahead and erase this work here. All right, we no longer need it. Okay, and here are two points, we will need those. So let's see how we're gonna do this. We're going to use our derivative. Remember, this is the slope of any tangent, right? So if I have the x value, okay, of the point okay, on the curve, right, which is gonna be right here and right here, if I essentially plug this in to my x here, right, that's gonna give me the slope of the tangent line. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. So taking, okay, my x value right here, I'm gonna have, right, my slope, which is going to be four, then times one plus the square root of two. Okay, and when we do this out, we got the slope equals four, right, plus four square root of two, okay? Now, go back to how to write the equation of a line. That's simply just going to be y equals mx plus b, right? Well, look what's gonna happen here. We have our slope, right? We have our point, right, x, y. Well, that's gonna be right here. We're gonna solve for b, and once we solve for b, we'll have our final equation, right, of that tangent line. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna plug in, right, x, y. So my y is going to be two, equal to my slope, which is right here. So four plus four square root of two, right? My x, right, is going to be one and then plus b. So we can see that when we solve for b here, what are we going to get, right? Well, it looks like we're gonna subtract four, right? Well, let's just rewrite this. We get two equals four plus four square root of two, right, plus b, right? So we're gonna go ahead and subtract four, so we get minus two, and then minus four square root of two, right, equal to b. Now we're ready to write our final equation of this um, tangent line, right? And that's gonna be the following. We're gonna have y equals, I'll write it right here, y equals 
our slope right here, which is going to be 4 plus 4 square root of 2. This would be x. Okay. And then our b value right here, and how we're going to write this is the following way. We're going to write minus, and then in parentheses, right, we have 2 plus 4 square root of 2. There is one equation, all right? So there is one equation on one of these tangent lines. We now we have to find the other, right? Okay, so we're going to do the same process here, except now we're using this value, all right? So let's go ahead and erase this, all right? And let's do the same thing here. So again, we want to find the slope of that tangent line, so we take our x value, okay, that's on our curve. So we go ahead and plug it in, we get our slope is equal to 4 times, right, 1 minus the square root of 2, right, we do this out, our slope is going to be 4 minus 4 square root of 2. Same thing, all right, we're going to use our um, equation of a line, same thing, we're using our point, so we're going to plug in a 2 for y, here's our slope, our x value again is 1, so we know anything times 1 is just going to be itself. Right, rewriting, we get 2 equal to 4 minus 4 square root of 2 plus b. Now, let's go ahead and just move everything over to the left so we can solve for b. We're going to get minus 2 plus 4 square root of 2. This is going to equal b. All right? So, we can go ahead and write our second equation okay, for our tangent line. That's going to be the following. y equals, so our slope in this case was 4 minus 4 square root of 2. This is just x, okay? And then our b value, so we're going to write it the following way, minus, and then in parentheses, we're going to have 2 minus 4 square root of 2, okay? So this here is going to be your final answer right here. So here are... Um, are two equations for the tangent lines, okay, that pass through the point 1, comma, 2. All right, and that is it.